everyone. I've decided to dig out my Distress Oxides um, for this week's Art Journal page. Um, I'm going to be using Iced Spruce, Vintage Photo and Peacock Feathers. I've also got this um, stencil here, which if I can find the packaging, I will tell you what it is. It's the one that um, Linda Pierce gave me um, for my birthday and it's called Mini Cosmic Bubbles um, and it's by TCW, the Crafters Workshop. And what I am going to do is I'm going to apply some of all of these um, oxides onto the stencil and I'm going to stamp um, with it. So I want a mixture of all three colours and then I'm going to spritz with water. Let me just check that you can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm spritzing with water and then I'm just going to stamp it randomly onto the onto the page. Not really thinking about you know where it's where it's going, just to create some interest. Then I'm going to go off and give this a dry. Before I go off and dry it, I've just decided that I want to add just a little bit more. Um, in a couple of areas so I've just applied some more of the ink to the stencil in the same way that um, you've just seen me do um, and again we'll just stamp with it um, right I'll give this a dry These colors look wonderful together right I've given this um, a dry um, now I've grabbed some of my stamp pads and I'm just going to randomly just add some color over the over the page I'm going to again use all three, all three of the colours. Use some of that iced spruce as well. I think this iced spruce is just absolutely gorgeous. I'm just going to fill in any gaps now with that um, iced spruce. I don't mind if I've got some um, white space going on um, because that just looks. That looks interesting. And then I'm going to spritz this with um, some water just to create um, a bit of pattern. So let me just put the lids back on. There we go. Move those out of the way. And then I'm just going to give it a light um, spritz just to activate those um, oxides. And then we can sort of maybe give it a bit of a smush on the, on the mat. I don't want to sort of, you know, blend um, all the pattern that I've got going on going on here um, and I'm going to give that another another dry. I just love how that looks so that's had a good dry now and I'm going to use the Tim Holtz um, I forgot I think this is schoolhouse um, stencil um, I'll put a, a comment on on screen once I sort of figure out which one it is and I'm just going to use the ice spruce just to um, add some of this stencil onto the onto the page I'm going to add it in a couple of places there we go, we'll have some there. Um, then I shall have some over here. We'll use a, a different part of it this time. Um, you can maybe use that part there. There we go. So position it on where you want it to go. And because it's quite busy already, the fact that I'm using the same colors that I've already used will stop it getting too, too busy. There we go, I just love that. And then I just want a bit um, down down here maybe. So let me just make sure that I'm in shot for you. So we'll add some here too. And then I shall go and give this um, a dry because um, the Distress Oxides stay wet just a little bit longer than normal normal ink. So I shall go and give this a dry and decide what I want to add next. Now I just want to add some um, Harlequins using one of the Tim Holtz um, layering stamps. Um, which way round do I want it? I want it this way round. I'm using the iced spruce again. Um, oh, can you hear Louis sort of making a... Oh, I think he's going to want some of his lunch. Right, so we'll just sort of tap that on in a few random places like that. That's fine. Um, so I'm going to give that a dry as well. I think I want a little bit in the middle. Let me just go and feed Louie and I'll come I back. I love this background. I think the colours are gorgeous and it's really coming together now. Um, I want to add um, some circles using a couple of bottle lids. This is off my facial cleanser and I've got absolutely no idea what that one um, is off, but I'm going to use some of the peacock feathers. Um, so let's stamp this bottle lid. And again, I want those in three different areas on my page. We'll have that one 
hanging off. Like, like that, I think. And then I'm going to add some clear um, embossing powder to this and keep my fingers crossed that, um, that it works. So let's just... And because the um, Distress Oxides stay wet for quite a while, they're absolutely perfect for um, embossing. So I've got a piece of paper underneath here to catch all of that um, excess powder. And I'm just going to heat set this with my heat gun. You can see actually as well that it's stuck um, to some of the other areas and I just absolutely love that. So this could be quite um, interesting. Let me just grab my heat tool, move that out of the way. Oh yes, I like that. Well, there we go, another happy accident this week. I just love how it's taken to some of those harlequins and partly to the numbers, but, um, but not others. So it just goes to show you how um, long the Distress inks do actually stay, stay wet because, of course, the embossing powder will only stick um, to the ink whilst it's still, still wet. So let's see how that looks. Just make sure that um, all of that embossing powder is set love how that looks and if I tilt it I don't know whether you can um, see where that embossing powder has stuck in some areas. Now I want to carry on doing a bit more embossing and I've got some of the covers off my paint brushes um, little tiny circles here and I'm going to do exactly the same thing again let me just move that embossing powder out of the way because we all know how clumsy I am and I'm bound to knock it over and I'm just going to add a few clusters of circles And I don't know whether I shall emboss this um, or, or not. And then I'm going to add some with the smaller end as well. But again, it's just adding layer of interest to, to this page. And we do the same down here as well. What the heck, in for a penny, in for a pound. Let's just go for it. And I'm going to heat set that too. So let's just move that out of the um, way. Happy with how that looks, but I want to add my border before I add a focal image. So I'm going to use some of the vintage photo um, and I'm just going to come in, in fact, I'll do it like this and just add a border around the edges. And so I'm going to carry on like this all the way around. Now, that's how my page is looking at the moment and I just absolutely love this background. And I've got a couple of possibilities um, and I'm not quite sure which I prefer. I could use two of the butterflies here out of the botanical pack um, and then put collect beautiful moments at the bottom. I just absolutely love how, how that looks. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is use one of the um, Tim Holtz um, paper dolls. I've managed to acquire a pack. I had to send off um, for this from America, guys. It um, arrived whilst I was away on holiday. You cannot get hold of these for love nor money in, in the UK. Sold out and have been for months, well, ever since they were issued, absolutely everywhere. And so I think what I'm going to do is I've put a butterfly behind this girl here and have the caption, today is full of possibilities. Um, and these are from, from this set here. So it's the quote chips, the Tim Holtz ideology quote chips, which again are difficult to get hold of um, in, in the UK. So I think what I'm going to do is ink around the edges. I'm going to use the um, vintage photo. Let's start off with, um, with this and just grunge this up around the edges a bit, just to sort of tie it, tie it all in. Oh, decisions, decisions. But you could see there, I just wanted to show both options because both um, would make a wonderful journal page. Um, so and I hope it sort of maybe helps and, and gives you some, some ideas. So there we go. We've inked around that. And now I just need to attach my butterfly. So what I'm going to do is grab a pair of scissors and just get rid of um, these antenna because they're um, in the way. 
whoops a daisy get rid of that um, I'm going to ink around the edges of this but I think I'm going to do that in the um, spruce so let's just ink around the edge of of this you're not going to see that part um, in the middle by the time um, it's glued it's glued down so again sticking with my my three colors not cheating there we are and then I can glue the butterfly down and I don't know whether to ink around the edge of her as well I think I will I think I should do that in the vintage photo though so we just go all the way around and I'll glue the um, butterfly wings on as soon as I've done that I'll come back so I've inked around the edges um, I went over the butterfly with the vintage photo as well and around the girl and so I'm happy with that so I'm now going to glue this down and I'm just using some of this Dovecraft um, ultimate craft glue um, and let's have a look we'll just put some on the back here I'm so glad that um, I managed to get some hold of um, some of these dolls though because as I say they're sold out absolutely everywhere um, in, in the UK you just can't get them um, for love nor money. Right hang on a second let me just grab a piece of tissue. Right so I want that about about there. Today is full of possibilities and let me just add some glue to the girl so that I can just slot slot her in as well. Let me just spread this uh, around and I'm using that glue because it's nice and strong and of course this is quite heavy um, chipboard and I want it to, well cardstock this is, gloss cardstock and I want it to stay stay put. Um, let's just get rid of that from around the edges and slot that in. I want her to go about about there. I don't want her floating on thin air, so I'm sort of using this to um, ground her. Right, so I'm going to play around with this and dry it all off and then I'll be back. So here's my finished page. Um, I just love it. I just love the way that this one has turned out. I love the colours. I just think it works really cohesively together. Um, I've added a few extra circles just to try and balance um, the page. I looked at it and just, you know, tried to assess where it needed a few extra tweaks. Um, and so I've added some circles here, here and there. Um, and then I just added another one of the Tim Holtz quotes. This is from the small talk tim holt's um, ideology small talk so we've got today is full of possibilities and so the adventure begins now to give you a few tips as to how to go about this i chose my images to start off with i knew that i was going to be using um either the butterflies or the girl and a butterfly to together and so that was how I chose my colours because I've got the brown, um, this lovely blue, and then I decided to use the grey as well because I've got the grey, grey, you know, sepia um, in the image here. And so that that was what determined the colours that I was going to use for, for my background. So it might be easier or help you if you choose your image first. And let me just give you another couple of examples. You could base your whole page um, on... Um, three colours um, using something like this. I mean, these were some flowers that um, I created um, after my um, art journal page last week. I continued playing around with my alcohol inks. So I've got the olive green, purple and pink in this. I could create a whole page um, around those three colours, use these as my focal image with maybe, you know, just a doodly stem and um, some, some leaves. Here's another image here. This was a tag that um, I started ages ago. I haven't got around to finishing it. It's just a page cut out from the Flower Fairies book. Um, so I could use the yellow, green and brown as my, my three colours. I've got this napkin here. This is a piece of napkin that's been fused onto freezer paper. I could use this section here as my focal image and I could use green, red and blue. So as I say, it just might make things easier for you if you choose your focal image first and just base your whole page um, around those colours. In fact, you know, that might even help some of you sort of generally with, with your journaling as well. Choose your focal image first and just work the whole page um, around that focal image. Um, so I look forward to seeing what everybody else decides to create for um, this week's prompt, which is choose 
use three colours, any three colours you like, but your whole page, you know, needs to be made just using those three, three colours. Um, and I know that I say it every week, but I'd really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up if you like this, because it just lets YouTube know that you like what I'm doing. And, you know, I love to hear your comments as well. So let me know what you think in the, in the comments below and feel free to share this with your friends on other, other social, so, social media. So take care, everyone, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.